Okay. <clears throat> I have something to say about animals in heaven and my experience that I had. Um, and also what the Bible says is Jesus will come in his second coming on a white horse. So that to me sounds like there are animals in heaven, plus there's that animal at God's throne with like lion, eagle, I don't know, weird eyeballs everywhere. So that sounds like animals in heaven, even though that could be some special creature. But And plus I've heard people have near-death experiences who say there were animals in heaven. And these are people who I trust because they come back as born-again Christians, usually if they go to hell. But um, I don't trust near-death experiences where they talk about things that aren't in alignment with God. Um, some of it sounds sketchy, a lot of it. So you have to be very careful with near-death experiences. So anyways, I was at a zoo, the Portland Zoo in Oregon, and <clears throat> with my family. Um, gosh, this was probably about six years ago or something. And um, I was alone. Uh, the rest of my family, I don't know if they were behind me or ahead of me because they have a little girl. So they were taking their time. And I was, I think I went up ahead to the uh, cougar, the mountain lion exhibit. And there was about 10 people um, right there at the window of the cave where one of the lions was sleeping and the other one was circling the, the uh, encagement or whatever it's called. So after about 10 to 15, 20 minutes in there somewhere, um, that lion is still sleeping with its head, you know, it's all curled up in a ball sleeping in that cave while everybody's standing looking. And I think in my mind, Jesus loves you to the cougar. The cougar stands up from its sleep, turns, looks out the window, and looks directly at me with all these other people standing around. So I was like, oh, that was weird. Because apparently, whether you're in hell or heaven, everything's telepathic. Now, this is, makes me think that animals are also somewhat telepathic, I guess, or they have an instinct of God, Jesus. Um, I don't know. So that's what it made me think of. And then we, when my family catches up, we move on. I don't tell my family any of this stuff. Um, you know, I just keep it to myself. And we go to the... Uh, the chimpanzee exhibit and there was only one chimpanzee and he was or she whatever it was was standing with his back against the uh window and it was a big huge window because it's a big place um my brother's wife was squatted down um uh as high as the chimpanzee with the chimpanzee's back towards her and I look at the chimpanzee and I think, Jesus loves you. This is after we've been sitting there for a while, you know. And that chimpanzee turns around and looks directly at um, the person standing there, the, uh, my brother's wife. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> it did it again. The animal heard me, I think, because it turned around and looked. It's very peculiar and odd. But that's what happened. You don't have to believe me, but it happened. And I just, you know, people wonder if there are animals in heaven. I think they have a spirit. I think they're very intelligent. Why would God make animals if not for even his own enjoyment and for our enjoyment, you know? Um, <clears throat> you know, they, did, they weren't the ones who sinned. We were, you know. Um, if there are worms in hell or certain things that God has to put in there, then that's okay. That's uh, his doing. If if the worms can handle the heat and the maggots while it's eating your f flesh over and over, then that's okay too. Oh.
So anyways, um, the thing about near-death experiences, there was a guy, Brian Melvin. He went to hell. He said that there were people there who were having heavenly experiences because Satan and demons, they're false, and they're going to give you a counterfeit of heaven even if you're in hell. Um possibly because these people are going to be able to come back and tell a story. So, I don't know. Sounds uh, like Satan to me, playing that kind of crap. Okay, <laughs> bye.